Greetings Raiders, this is Vespa and welcome to my guide for the Lubrum Regine Savage. This video will be focusing on one of the first encounters of DRS, Gollum's side. Though there are strategies that can be modified for undersized groups, the general principles for successfully completing this encounter will remain the same. When you enter the instance, you will go down the stairs and see the Lost Actions cache. Make sure you have prepared your active lost actions and you have your holster loadout ready before leaving, because once you leave you will not be able to come back here. The raid will then split to either the east or the west side. As we are on Gollum's side, we will hop onto the teleporter to the right of the cache, which will take us east to the neglected granary. Here, players will be assigned their rooms and responsibilities. In the first run, raid leaders will usually go over this to ensure everyone understands what they have to do. Those players assigned perception will use this lost action to detect traps. There are two types of traps. The yellow ones will one-shot players and anyone close by, and the purple ones are poison traps. There will be three traps in total, with one trap guaranteed to be in the hallway. The players assigned to use perception will do so at the most suddenly corners to cover the southwest and the southeast rooms. If they receive a message that says you sense a concealed trap nearby, that means a trap is in that room, but it will not have been revealed to other players. As such, when the encounter begins, perception players know they will need to use perception in that room to fully reveal the trap. If you receive a message that says you don't sense a trap, that room does not have one. If you get that message when checking both of the southern rooms, this confirms that both traps are in the northern rooms. To deal with these, we can reveal and ignore them, taking care not to touch them. Or a tank can use an immunity and run through the trap if they know they won't be using it for this encounter. Just make sure to let your party members know so they won't be standing close by and also get hit by it. If something has gone wrong or players are waiting for their perception players to reveal the traps, you can generally be safe if you hug the walls. Here on the floor, you will see four piles of rubble, two coloured blue and two coloured green. Our objective is to kill the four different colour golems on four different coloured platforms. When the golems cast Metamorphosis, they will change colour and restore themselves to full HP. The most important part about this cast is that it can be silenced. The order they change colour is as follows. Blue into white, into green, into red, into blue. We will control what colour the golem is and if we want it to change colours. Check this diagram to see which golem is assigned to what room. Be aware that if the golems are too close to each other, they will tether and not take damage anymore. As such, keep them separated at all times. So when this encounter starts, let the tanks establish aggro and take them to their appropriate rooms. This goes for healers too, do not pre-shield and do not heal either. It should be noted that each time a golem dies, the remaining golems will get a damage up stack. Also, the golems must be killed on their platforms, otherwise they will respawn over and over again. You will know you have done this correctly, as the platform will glow. The blue golem will be taken to the southwest room. If you are the tank assigned to this golem, you must interrupt every metamorphosis cast. This golem has the torrential ruin buff, and will cast an AoE on the pre-assigned tank, which does high damage and a bleed. We normally have the tank use their immunity here, while the healer uses Isuna to cleanse the bleed and heal them up. All DPS will start in this room and DPS the golem down, whilst the tank ensures that the golem dies on the platform. Everyone in this room will then form a death ball and head to the southeast room. Here in the southeast room, we will have the white golem. This golem will also cast a tank buster that can be immunitied and should be assunered and healed up by their assigned healer. The main tank here will need to make sure not to interrupt the first metamorphosis cast, because we want this golem to change from blue to white. 
Once it changes to white, all future casts of Metamorphosis must be interrupted. This is the most important part of the tank's job, because if it changes colour again, we will not have a white golem to kill on the white platform, ultimately resulting in a raid wipe. Back to the white golem, you'll notice it has the subtle ruin buff. So when this golem reaches 30% HP or below, it will cast Compaction. This is basically the golem casting Benediction on itself, whereby it will restore its HP back to 100%. As such, this is a DPS check, so make sure to have some burst to use for when its HP reaches below 30%. Once it is dead, the death pool will move to the northeast room. In the northeast room, we have the green golem. The main tank here will ensure they interrupt every metamorphosis cast to keep this golem green. Note that this golem has the avaricious ruin buff, which means this golem can consume the ruin golems that spawn in the hallways, each time becoming stronger and healing itself to full. As such, the main tank will ensure it is kept in the northeastern room to avoid this. Simply DPS down this golem, while healers keep an eye on the main tank's health, as this golem will have stacks of damage up from the other golems that have died. Once defeated, the death ball will go to the northwest room. Here we have the red golem. The main tank here will let the first cast of Metamorphosis go through, allowing it to turn red. This golem has the bloody ruin buff and will tether to the first person that hits it and will slowly walk towards them. If it lands an auto attack, it will impart high damage which is capable of killing players. As such, it should be kited around the room to avoid this. We also usually have a physical range player assigned to interrupt casts of Metamorphosis so that the tank doesn't have to risk getting hit by an auto attack. When this golem reaches 15%, we stop DPS and wait to hear from the slime side. But before we continue, let's quickly look at the Ruin Golems. Periodically at the northern and southern end of the hallway, Ruin Golems will spawn. We will have a tank take each one, with a healer assigned to keep them up. These golems will tether to the first person who attacks them, and they will also attack for low damage. Tanks should ensure they are kept where they are spawned to avoid any hiccups. Now, back to the red golem which is sitting at 15%. We do this because when all of the colored golems die, this soft enrage begins, whereby the ruined golems will begin spawning faster than before, and begin casting Demolish. A long cast, which when it goes off will hit all players, giving them a ruin stack. At this stage of DRS, getting three stacks will result in a doom. After some time, reapers will spawn, which will guarantee a raid wipe. So, as to avoid running around and trying to deal with all that chaos, we will have everyone chill and help kill any remaining ruin golems, and wait for the report from the slime side. Once the raid leaders give the okay, we will DPS down the red golem, with the main tank using their immunity and ensuring it dies on the platform. When golems and slime sides have both lit up all their platforms, players will be able to proceed to the northern door, jump on the teleporter, making sure to pick up your two chests, which will have a random pure fragment each. Up next we have the first boss of DRS, Trinity Seeker. I hope you found this guide useful, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to do so in the comment box below. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future uploads, and you can also find me live over on Twitch. Thanks for watching and take care.